Although Ratchet and Clank haven't had too many games of their own as of late, there's been an argument for years now that Ratchet is the Mario of PlayStation. A long-lasting, family-friendly series that isn't afraid to experiment or shake things up. Plus, when you think about it, for at least a few years there, Mario and Ratchet were the only franchises from their respective company to hit theaters with a critically panned film, so, you know, there's that. With Ratchet being one of the key mascots of the PlayStation, it's only natural that they've appeared in a ton of other series, making crossover cameos in over 20 games, movies, and more. So I figured what better way to talk about Ratchet and Clank cameos than bringing on a guest appearance of my own, somebody that I'm a big fan of and one of the stars of the biggest crossover film of all time. Hey, thanks for having me. I do love some Ratchet and Clank, so I am really excited. Hold on, wait, 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 one second here. You're not Tobey Maguire. You said we got Ant-Man. What? Oh, Ant-Man, Ant-Dude, ha, huh? that's that's a funny original joke, very nice, haha. -ha. If Paul Rudd's Ant-Man, then who the hell is Tobey Maguire? You know what, whatever, it's fine, you'll do. Today, we're gonna take a look at Ratchet and Clank's cameos over the years. So, uh, Mr. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Dude, would you care to take it away? Sure, but hey, Mr. Dude is my father. Let's kick things off with one of the more recent Ratchet appearances and talk about Super Bomberman R. This was originally a Switch exclusive and one of the Switch's like three launch titles back in March 2017, right there next to Snipper Clips, 1 2 Switch. Nothing else. I don't think anything else came out that day. Just over a year later, in June 2018 though, Bomberman made his jump over to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, with some special characters in each. Xbox owners would gain access to Master Chief, and PS4 players get to play as Ratchet and Clank. Kind of a missed opportunity that he doesn't get to use the bomb glove though, gotta say. Not too long after Bomberman were Ratchet's two most recent appearances, although these two are probably more so references than they are truly cameos. In Insomniac's amazing 2018 Spider-Man game, our web-slinging hero can perform mid-air tricks when zipping through Manhattan, both for bonus experience and more importantly just to look cool. You know who else looked cool when doing tricks? Ratchet when he took on the hoverboard races in his very first galactic adventure. By completing every possible trick in a single jump, Ratchet would perform the Twisty McMarks move, named after the hoverboarder Skid McMarks that he meets earlier on in his journey. And, well, if Spidey was gonna have tricks, of course he had to have a super trick too. So if you perform all four aerial tricks in one single freefall, you'll complete the Spidey McMarks and earn even more bonus experience. Almost exactly one year later, in September 2019, another game all about experience hit store shelves in the form of Borderlands 3. Considering Gearbox's flagship series, like Ratchet before it, has always featured a crazy selection of weapons, they kind of had to at least once hail to the king of insane arsenals. And they did just that in this game with a cute little side quest called Ratched Up. This mission tasks you with killing a bunch of smaller enemies known as Ratches, and upon completion rewards you with the Peacemonger, a rocket launcher that fires a barrage of smaller homing missiles. This weapon is both a callback to and a portmanteau of Ratchet and Clank's Warmonger rocket launcher and its evolved form, the Peacemaker. Now I know that any part of that by itself might sound like a bit of a coincidence, but when you factor in the weapon's name, the mission's name, and that the description of the gun is a direct quote from one of Ratchet and Clank's weapon vendors, yeah, I would say that's close enough to count in my book. Jumping from Borderlands 3 to the PlayStation 3, like just about every other PlayStation character out there, Ratchet and Clank made appearances in the Little Big Planet series as an optional paid Sackboy costume. While most of the skins would usually cost you $2, this duo obviously had to come in a combo pack, so just for $3, you get to play as Ratchet or Clank in any level you desire and any game you desire. The entire LBP series is cross compatible, meaning that with a few exceptions, you can transfer for levels, costumes, and an absolute treasure trove of content from Little Big Planets 1, 2, and 3. Your costumes will even transfer from any of the console games to the Vita version. And let me just say, it is amazing how hard these teams must have worked to ensure that everything would carry over, especially when Little Big Planet 3 was made not only by a different developer, as Media Molecule passed the reins over to Sumo Digital, but also both for the PlayStation 3 and 4. 
Naturally, players have gone crazy over the years, using the really robust level editor to make dozens of 2.5D Ratchet-themed content. And knowing just how hard it is to create really solid levels in these games, you can't help but admire the dedication here. I'm sure it's only a matter of time until we see Ratchet stuff in Dreams as well. Oh, what's that? There's already been one for like a year already? Man, even during the beta stage, people couldn't help but show love to Ratchet. Some of the stages you can find in Little Big Planet 3 are even in a sort of full 3D style, although the 3D controls really aren't all that great and the camera especially can get pretty atrocious, but hey, credit to Sumo Digital for trying something new, rather than simply sticking to what the first few games did. And even if it wasn't up to the high bar set by Media Molecule, it was still a good attempt from a team usually known for these Sonic racing games. Hey, wait, actually, wasn't there also a Little Big Planet kart game? We, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about Little Big Planet karting. But while we're on the subject, actually, let's talk about another PlayStation exclusive kart racing game with a creator suite. Wow, that's, that's a very specific thing I just said. Mod Nation Racers. In the first of many pre-order bonuses on this list, if you pre-ordered Mod Nation through Amazon back in 2010, you'd receive a bonus code for Ratchet & Clank as skin mods. Other stores around the world had their own pre-order exclusives too. GameStop buyers received Kratos, Best Buyers got Nathan Drake, and here's a throwback. If you purchased at Game Crazy, you would receive Sackboy. Remember Game Crazy? No? Me neither. Thankfully, all of these skins were later added as paid DLC skins as well, except for Sackboy. Apparently, that one went to the grave with Game Crazy. However, less thankfully, all of that DLC is now impossible to obtain since the servers went down, so I can't show you any original gameplay of Ratchet. Yay, digital future! While I'm sourcing footage from other creators, links to those videos in the description by the way, if you pre-ordered Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare when it left Xbox exclusivity and came over to the PS3 and 4, you would receive Ratchet Ears as an optional hat customization. Other PlayStation characters had representation as well, such as Sly Cooper's hat and a Fat Princess wig. Nothing really too special to see here if I'm honest, but I've got to shout out these spoof posters that the team made to tease Garden Warfare's PlayStation debut. I mean, look at this, a zombie knockoff of a Kraken Times promo art? Amazing. To jump from Garden Warfare to Planetary Warfare, let's go back to Insomniac's portfolio once again and talk about the Resistance franchise, which is absolutely littered with little callbacks and references to our dynamic duo. In the now-defunct multiplayer for Resistance 1 and 2, players could unlock a Clank backpack and Ratchet's wrench as cosmetic customizations. The Clank backpack is especially notable because it would also change the player's shoes into the Magna Boots from Ratchet and Clank 1. Beyond these obvious ones, there are several other tie-ins between Resistance and Ratchet, which makes sense when you consider that these games were being developed simultaneously and often within the same building. Many enemies and vehicles share designs between these two series, such as the Stalker and the Landstalker for example, but I wouldn't really consider those cameos as much as these games sharing DNA. The same goes for much of Insomniac's only Xbox-exclusive game, Sunset Overdrive, and really, most of Insomniac's portfolio. That said, Sunset Overdrive does sneak in some Ratchet references at points too, despite being developed solely for the competitor's console. The most notable of these is found in the game's intro, when it spoofs the names of every game title that Insomniac has ever developed. Look, if nobody else is gonna say it, I will. I would totally play Catchit and Frank, blessed with booty. Rounding out the basic cosmetics, at least for now, is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. I bet you didn't see that one coming. If you bought Pro Skater 5 on PS3 or PS4, you would automatically unlock a Ratchet hat for your skater customization suite, along with Sackboy and Twisted Metal's Sweet Tooth slash Needles Cane. Or at least that's supposed to be the case, but only if you bought either version of the game digitally. Except, at least in the North American PlayStation Store, you can't buy the PS3 version digitally anymore, so now it's just digitally and just on the PS4. I, uh, I actually borrowed my buddy's PS3 copy, and after playing it for about half an hour and hating myself, I realized the costumes weren't there. And I'm not spending $60 on a digital version of a horrible game just for two seconds of footage, so here's more trailer footage, yay! Also, somehow seeing Sackboy's face on a human body is somehow creepier than a flaming clown head. I, I don't, I don't, Sackboy is nightmare fuel. 
And, like I said, about two seconds of footage, that's about it. Look, the less time I have to talk about Pro Skater 5, the better, because we all know how rough this game was. All right, now watch this. I'm going to deliver the best transition of all time using only three degrees of separation. I'm sorry, what? Skateboarding. Metal Gear Solid 2 had skateboarding. Metal Gear Solid 3 had the Ape Escape 3 crossover. And Ape Escape 3 had the Ratchet and Clank crossover. Boom. Okay, carry on. Ape Escape is no stranger to having random cameos with other games, from Metal Gear to Splinter Cell, even Monster Rancher, so it's no surprise that Ratchet and Ape Escape have crossed paths before. For example, in the Japanese versions of Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal and Deadlocked, entering in a cheat code would grant you a Peeposaru skin for Ratchet. Likewise, in any version of Ape Escape 3 except the North American one, entering in another cheat would allow you to encounter and capture a Ratchet & Clank monkey. They really went all out for this one too, it's decked out in Ratchet's classic outfit with a little clank on his back that allows him to hover with the thruster pack, and he's even holding a working replica of the Rhino from Ratchet 1. It's so cool. It's just a shame you can't get him in the North American version of the game. That really stings, but hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, trust me, I feel your pain on that one. I, uh, I bought a Japanese PS2 for this, uh, played the entire game in full because it turns out the Ratchet Monkey is in the final level of Ape Escape 3. So I played Ape Escape 3 understanding absolutely none of it, then learned at least a little bit of Japanese writing structure to input the Ratchet Monkey cheat code, all just to capture that 30 seconds of footage that I could have just taken from YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this lockdown has done some weird things to all of us. The entire Ape Escape series is so filled to the brim with this kind of charm. Having something like that tucked in there doesn't surprise me one bit. Man, I love this series so much. I really want there to be a revival, a remake, or something. But that stupid Ape Escape 20th Anniversary Twitter seems to be more than happy with just showing plushes, and that's it. Because, you know, life is pain. Anyway, I'm getting way off track here. If you want to see me talk more about the Ape Escape series, I have done multiple videos on my channel, so you can go ahead and jump over after this video is done. All right, hear me out here. I just thought of another degree of separation. You know what else Ratchet and Ape Escape both tied into around this same time? Hot Shots Golf. Take it away, Paul. Okay, I'm gonna go and get like water or something. Golf's not really my thing. Yeah, that's it. Also, it's Ant. Why do so many people get that wrong? Wait, no, come back. I loved you and friends. Oh, man. He'll be back, right? Well, I guess I'm talking about Hot Shots Golf 4 alone then. As I mentioned a moment ago, both the Ape Escape and the Ratchet series made cameos in this installment of PlayStation's premier golf game. I... those are words. One of Ape Escape's monkeys joins Clank as an unlockable caddy, with Ratchet playable as an unlockable golfer. Although, again, this all depends on your region. Ratchet and Clank are only unlockable in the North American and European versions of 4, while the monkey is only available in the European and Japanese versions. For once, you European players have it lucky when it comes to bonus features. So I'll be honest, arcadey golf games are a weird, guilty pleasure of mine, so I've put a ton of time into stuff like Mario Golf, the Hot Shots games, all of it. But I'll just never find it normal to see Ratchet teeing off like this. I mean, come on dude, put on a shirt at least. The most interesting thing about this cameo is that it marks the first proper crossover appearance between Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Yeah, who would have thought that the first time these two rival duos faced off would be over a rousing round of golf? The historic rivalry between Ratchet and Jack may as well date back five years before either series existed. Back in the late 90s, Insomniac and Naughty Dog shared an office space while working on two of the biggest series on the PlayStation, Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot respectively. The two studios formed a sort of kinship that has remained for years, often bouncing ideas off of one another and even sharing assets. This was most visible during the early days of the PS2, when the two teams continued inspiring one another to take bigger and bigger leaps forward. After Insomniac cancelled its first post-Spyro game and began work on what would become Ratchet & Clank, Naughty Dog offered to share some of the rendering techniques they developed for Jack, which helped Ratchet come into its own and blow past anybody's expectations. 
Among other things, like the explosion of GTA 3 and the slow but steady collapse of the collectathon genre, seeing Ratchet's development firsthand and seeing what a monumental game it was, was a key inspiration for Naughty Dog to shift Jack's structure for its second game, which in turn helped push Insomniac to establish an even higher bar in Going Commando. These two studios pushed one another to be their absolute best, and it was magical to see this rivalry develop in real time. Hey, Ant, what do you think about Jack and Daxter? Oh. And while this rivalry definitely developed naturally amongst the two fan bases, the two studios also made sure to stoke the fire a little bit through their back and forth references. For example, in Going Commando, you can find Jack and Daxter posters in places like Clank's apartment, while in Jack 2, Ratchet and Clank are plastered on billboards in Haven City. In Jack 3, there's a Ratchet and Clank themed course in the shooting range, and by the time we got to Jack X and Ratchet Deadlocked, the two were outright playable in one another's games. Ratchet appears as an unlockable racer in Jack X if you have a deadlocked save on your PS2 memory card, or a Ratchet PS4 save if you're playing X's PS4 port. And likewise, Jack appears as a co-op exclusive skin for Deadlocked. Even in Daxter's PSP solo spin-off, Daxter can find and wear Ratchet and Clank themed masks, along with a Sly Cooper one to round out the PS2's holy trinity of platformers. While everybody's favorite thief is on the mind, let's jump into the crossovers between Ratchet and Sly. Well, really, there's only one crossover each way, surprisingly. Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal featured a bonus demo of Sly 2 if you held L1, L2, R1, and R2 and pressed Start on the main menu. To reference this, Sony gave North American buyers of the Ratchet & Clank HD collection on PS3 an exclusive demo for Sly Cooper Thieves in Time as an apology for suddenly releasing the collection a couple of months earlier than scheduled in Europe for some unknown reason. Of course, those extra two months of potential development could have gone towards polishing the collection, and of course the demo was only exclusive for like a month before they released it on the PS Store for everybody, but Sony did some really weird things in the early 2010s, so I'm just gonna move along. Sly 4 returned the favor by tossing in a couple of cameos to the Ratchet series, such as one of the collectible treasures being a medieval statue of Clank. And if the player obtains 50 of the Sly masks hidden throughout the game, they'll unlock a skin for Sly's cane modeled after Ratchet's Omni-Wrench. Defeating enemies with the wrench changes all the coins dropped into bolts straight out of Ratchet, and every bolt you pick up is actually worth two coins, which, you know, by the time you've got 50 Sly masks, you've already bought most of the things in the game, but it's the thought that counts. And of course, if we're gonna talk about Ratchet, Jack, and Sly, it's time we talk about the game that everybody asked for for years. A crossover game between this trio where they would all work together to save the day. The game that Sony not only completely botched, but also a game into which they forced gaming's one true villain, Motion Controls. That's right, let's talk about PlayStation Move Heroes. What could have been an awesome experience seeing these iconic mascots teaming up together turned into a shovelware game that would fit right at home on the Wii in 2008. Except that this shovelware game came out on the PS3 in 2011. How? This game is just, it's, it's just atrocious, with such original ideas like frisbee throw, shake your controller to swing a weapon poorly, and f***ing bowling. Look, I don't, I don't even want to talk about this game, but I know I'll have to someday, so I'll save it all for then and move along to the true PlayStation crossover game, PlayStation All-Stars Island, sponsored by Coke Zero. For smartphones in Europe only. Have you ever wanted to play a video game only to be distracted by unquenchable thirst? Let PlayStation All-Stars Island whisk you away into a bubbling sea of pleasure, featuring Uncharted Temple Run, Gravity Rush Temple Run, Little Big Planet Karting, the, the, uh, the, other, the other one, and infamous Second Run. All the while, take a refreshing sip of the crisp, delicious, zero calorie, zero sugar, Coke Zero, and scan your drink to earn even more minigames, rewards, and cameos such as Clank being there. Play PlayStation All-Stars Island and drink Coke Zero today. <sighs> Oh god! This video is not sponsored by Coke Zero. Your experiences may vary. If I ever say to you that I despise late PS3 era PlayStation, stuff like that is why. 
Actually closing out our list of Ratchet appearances is the other, much lesser known, and much less Coke-sponsored PlayStation All-Stars, uh, PlayStation All-Stars. 2012's Fighting Game of the Year, yes, actually, was a game that I have a long history with, and also is still the best game with Battle Royale in the title. I don't want to stretch too long into talking about All-Stars, but if you want to know more about the game and its complicated history, I made a full-scale two-part documentary about it a few years back, featuring exclusive info from the game's former developers. I recommend watching that after we're done here. It might just make you look at this game and its development much differently. As far as today's topic goes, well, Ratchet was naturally in All-Stars as a playable fighter, with Clank at his side as always. Rookie developer Superbot Entertainment spared no expense ensuring that each character was as accurate to the source material and felt as close to home as possible. And that's especially true with Ratchet. By the way, when I say they spared no expense making this roster play accurately, I mean it. I mean, look, they didn't even finish the menus. For one, Ratchet's moveset features a wide arsenal of different weapons at different ranges, and everything down to his three-hit wrench combo feels ripped right out of the proper games. If you ever want to imagine what a 2D Ratchet game would play like, no, not that one, this moveset is exactly it. Ratchet is deadly at both close range and as a zoning character, and that's part of the reason that he was one of the higher-tiered characters in the game's short-lived competitive scene. But beyond moveset, this duo just oozes that classic Ratchet charm here. From Ratchet's costumes referencing games throughout the series, standing in stark contrast to a lot of Battle Royale's other characters who would usually be solely based on their most recent appearance, to the Metropolis stage or Nefarious invading the Resistance level, it's all just perfect fan service. There are references to old idol poses, several characters appear as those weird little cheerleader minion things, both in the base game and as paid DLC, even one of the victory poses is a spin on the original game's cover art. It's just a lovely adaptation of the duo's history. And a better one than the PS4 game. And naturally, Ratchet and Clank's rival in this game's story mode had to be Jack and Daxter, again nodding back to their shared history. Essentially, what I'm saying here is, never let anybody tell you that PlayStation All-Stars didn't pay attention to detail just as much as Smash does, because they're either wrong, misinformed, or lying, and Ratchet is the perfect example of this. That just about wraps up the proper cameos, appearances, and references that Ratchet's had in video games, but of course this duo has appeared on the big screen as well, so naturally they've also appeared in a few film-focused references. For one, Ratchet & Clank, along with other popular games, is referenced on the marquee of an adult movie theater in Infamous 2, with the spoof film's title listed as Latchet & Spank. Alright, I'm back, what did I miss? But more importantly, if you look very carefully, you can see a Ratchet & Clank poster in Paul Blart Mall Cop. I shouldn't have come back. So that's a comprehensive list of Ratchet & Clank's cameos, references, and appearances from over the years. Or at least I'm pretty sure it is. If I did miss something, make sure to let me know in the comments. Now, on a more serious note, and all jokes aside here, I want to give a special thank you to AntDude both for joining this video and for being a really good sport of the process. Uh, if you're not already watching some of his videos, you should definitely make it a point to do so. He's inspired quite a bit of my production style over these last few years, as well as some specific videos, and he's just a genuinely great dude, so it's been really awesome having him on. But that's enough for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, sharing, subscribing, and supporting, and until next time, stay golden. Today's episode was produced in part thanks to supporters on Patreon, including my $5 Silverbolt patrons like Mayor Hairbear and Buckles Chucklo. To learn more about how you can help support future videos and receive exclusive perks and bonuses, please visit patreon.com slash thegoldenbolt. Thank you.